I want to talk for a second to tell you about how halocarbons chew through ozone, cause the ozone hole, and lead to what's called ozone depletion. Basically, why these are bad for the ozone layer. Now I've listed some examples of halocarbons here. They're known as halocarbons because they all have a halogen atom or two, and they all have a carbon atom or two. If it has a halogen and carbon, it's a halocarbon, get it? The point though is that when these escape into the upper atmosphere, light from the sun breaks them up. CCL4 can break up into CCL3, which is reactive. I get that it's not something that normally forms and a free CL atom. It'll just break a CL atom off. Done. This molecule here, this bromine can come straight off. I get that this is reactive as well, but in the upper atmosphere, in the gas phase, anything goes. You can just rip a bromine atom straight off. You can rip a chlorine off of this molecule. You can actually rip two chlorines off that molecule, but let's say we only get one this time. And you can do the same here. Here we'll go down to three chlorines, and we'll rip a chlorine off of that. Any halo carbon can lose one of its halogens, and now this halogen atom is just floating around the ozone layer, hanging out. What's the problem with that, you ask? Well, the problem is that each of these halogen atoms is horrendously reactive. In fact, a chlorine atom will react with an ozone molecule and destroy it. It'll steal an oxygen away. You'll get a chlorine atom bonded to an oxygen and you'll be left with O2 in the end. Now, so a chlorine destroys an ozone, big deal. The problem is also in the upper atmosphere, you have ozone breaking up on its own to create single oxygen atoms and O2. And what happens is that this ClO molecule can react with a free O. ClO plus O. When those two get together, they react to make just a chlorine and an O2 molecule. So you'll notice that this free oxygen steals an oxygen away from the ClO molecule. Now, take a look at what's happening here. Chlorine destroys an ozone to make ClO. And in the end, ClO regenerates the Cl. So, chew up an ozone, chlorine regenerates itself. Chew up an ozone molecule, chlorine regenerates itself. Chlorine is actually a catalyst for this destruction of ozone here. In fact, if we were to add up all of these chemical reactions, everything on the left and everything on the right, what you'll notice is that you have Cl on the left, two ozones on the left, a ClO on the left, and an O. On the right, we end up with a ClO, an O, a Cl, and three of these O2 molecules. This is your overall reaction, your total reaction if you prefer. And what you'll notice is, remember if you have something on both sides of an equation, you can cancel them out. There's a Cl on both sides, there's a ClO on both sides, and there's an O on both sides. In the end, what is the total reaction that's happening here? Two ozone molecules, destroyed three oxygen molecules created. This overall reaction just takes ozone and destroys it. And what causes it? The fact that a chlorine was there to chew it up and regenerate itself. Chew it up and regenerate itself over and over and over again. Thus, the problem with the ozone layer is that we're releasing halocarbons into the atmosphere to produce these free halogens. 
And that's how halo carbons chew through ozone. Best of luck.